When we think about an ionic bond, opposite charges attracting and sticking together, we can understand this on the basis of energy. When we studied Coulomb's law, we discovered that as opposite charges get closer together, the energy goes down, and systems in nature like to go to lower energy. But what about in covalent bonds with neutral atoms? Well, the energy must go down there too, but how does that work? We need to think harder about the subatomic particles. This is figure 5.1 from the textbook, and we will see it many times throughout the course, so let's take a little time to understand what it's showing. It is a two-dimensional plot of the interaction energy between two atoms that comes from the interaction of the electrons and nuclei. The plot has energy on the y-axis and r, the distance between the centers of the atoms, in other words, the distance between the nuclei, on the x-axis. Notice that zero energy is at the top. The first point on the plot to look at is at the top right. The figure is drawn for dihydrogen and shown are two 1s orbitals on two different atoms. They are far enough apart, designated by the distance r1, that they do not interact. Thus the interaction energy is zero. Note that the total energy of this system is not zero since each hydrogen atom has some energy associated with it. But this is a plot of interaction energy between the two atoms, so that is zero. The second point is labeled R2. Here the atoms begin to interact. Instead of spherical 1s orbitals, the illustrator has shown them distorted with the electron on the left atom attracted toward the nucleus on the right atom, and vice versa. Since this is an attractive interaction between opposite charges, a negative electron and a positive nucleus, the energy from Coulomb's law would be negative. At R3, the nuclei are closer still, and the electron clouds now begin to overlap. The interaction is stronger, and the energy is more negative. At R4, the interaction is the strongest, and the energy is the lowest. Since systems in nature seek the lowest energy they can find, this would be the most favorable distance. Notice that the illustrator has the resulting orbital symmetrical. You can no longer distinguish between the left-hand orbital and the right-hand orbital. The idea here is that there is a new region in space that spans the molecule, that both electrons are free to move around in. We will later call this a molecular orbital. One more point of interest. At R5, the nuclei are now coming close enough together that the repulsive forces between them become significant. We know that when like charges of the two nuclei interact, they contribute a positive energy to the interaction. So the energy goes back up. There are two numbers on the axes. On the x-axis, 0.74 angstroms represents the bond length. This is the optimal internuclear distance for the best interaction. The energy at that point, minus 436, represents the bond energy, the change in energy that the two atoms experience when they bond, although the number is actually for a mole of bonds. What this picture is telling us is that in a system with two hydrogen atoms, they would prefer to be bonded together than to exist as separate atoms.